Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the virtual Perez Art Museum, Miami. My name is Marie Vickles. I'm the Director of Education, and thank you for joining us for Local Views at PAM with artist John William Bailey. Our Local Views program is presented with the generous support of the John S. and James L. Knight Foundation and features Miami-based artists sharing their practice and discussing works of art from PAM's exhibition programs that connect in various ways to their own work. As a 21st century museum dedicated to representing the people and communities of South Florida, the Perez Art Museum Miami strives to be a leader in the presentation, study, interpretation, and care of international and modern and contemporary art, while representing and cherishing the unique diversity of Miami-Dade. Through our exhibitions and programs, we aim to encourage everyone to see art as an incentive for genuine human interaction. Tonight, I'm so happy to introduce John William Bailey, a Miami-based artist making work that inspires us to consider our unique and geospecific relationships to history and culture. Before I introduce John, I would like to acknowledge and thank the incredible team of people that work so very hard to make these programs come together online. Thank yous go out to Anita Bram, Associate Director of Adult Programs and Audience Engagement, and our world-class AV team, Denise Faxis and Andrew Bird. We couldn't do this without you, thank you. Let's get started. John William Bailey, as a French American artist born in the UK, living in Miami. He received his MFA in painting and printmaking from Yale University and has been a faculty fellow of the Honors College at Florida International University since 2004. He is currently the artist in residence fellow at the Daring Estate. John's work engages history and culture with an emphasis on the transatlantic dialogue. His paintings explore the question of how we are and who we are in relation to history, place, and culture. In 2007, John and critically acclaimed poet Richard Blanco produced a collaborative project called Place of Mind. His works have been exhibited at University of Maine Museum of Art, Patricia and Philip Frost Museum of Art, John and Mabel Ringling Museum of Art, Texas State University, as well as other venues in the US and France. He is also a recipient of the South Florida Cultural, Cultural Consortium Fellowship for Visual and Media Artists and a State of Florida Individual Artist Grant. At FIU, John is a faculty director of Honors France, Italy, and Spain Study Abroad annually leading students through Western Europe for three months. He has been awarded two Excellence in Teaching Awards and a European Union grant for course development. His work is represented locally by LNS Gallery in Miami. As you watch along this evening on Facebook or YouTube Live, please post questions for John in the comments section. He will try to answer as many as possible in the Q&A portion of this evening's presentation. And remember, if you value this and other programs presented by the museum, please consider supporting us by going to pam.org backslash donate. So without further ado, please join me in giving a warm welcome to John William Bailey. Greetings from Lyon. I'm currently in France. As Marie said, um, my life has constantly been lived on both sides of the Atlantic. Until the age of 10, I lived in France. I went to French school, and then I came to the US and I could only read and write the word cat in English. It has forever been a, a search for who am I and where do I belong and what is home? What is my sense of place? As Marie said, I'm the artist in residence fellow at the Deering Estate, and I have a studio there. Um, this is incredibly important for, to me because it allows me to connect to the land. My degree is in painting and printmaking from Yale University. Um, I'm also a faculty fellow of the Honors College, which my job there also sees me go on both sides of the Atlantic. Normally, every summer, as Marie said, I'm leading students, but because of COVID the last two years, those programs have been canceled. This has been enabled me to spend the summers painting in France. And I have always painted 
in Miami, looking back at my heritage in France. But these last two summers are the first time that I've been able to paint in France, looking back at the roots that I've established in Miami and trying to sort all this out. I've prepared a, a slideshow um, that will cover a lot of this. And please have questions as I move through this and we'll, we'll catch up to them after. So at this stage, I'm gonna to switch to the PowerPoint. Okay, so this is my, it's called the Powerhouse Studio at the Deering Estate. And it sounds quite grand, but in actuality, it's just because their generators and their electricity was in there. So it was the Powerhouse. Um, this is on the grounds of the Deering Estate in Palmetto Bay in the south of Miami. The Deering Estate has a large natural area and I am allowed uh, to hike through there. It's 460 acres. And what is interesting about this land is that it gives us one of the few places in Miami um, to, to see and for me to draw the pristine nature Miami as it was before we altered the landscape. And so I'm able to get to an authentic Miami. Um, another thing is it's on Biscayne Bay. The colors and the light and the movement and the space of this place, which is land and sea, is really important to me. And so not only do I hike and draw, but I also kayak and draw. And this is a small island off Miami called Chicken Key. I set up out there. Um, I really, if my work is about place, I want to know place, not just visually. I don't work from photographs. I want to live it and then process it into my paintings. This is a series of paintings that I did of figures that are important in the history of Miami. And they are in a sense, consumed by Miami. One of the things I've noticed that are, that's different from the landscape of Miami compared to the landscape of Europe and how it manifests, that manifests itself in artwork is figures in paintings in Europe look like Playmobil figures set in a stage. The nature of Europe is spacious. Miami is claustrophobic. It's a tropical web uh, that you are consumed by. So I try to reflect that the space is different. The feeling that you have in nature is different. And on Biscayne Bay, you just, you feel that humidity, you feel the water. And so these are all different figures, um, including Julia Tuttle, um, Ponce de Leon, the first uh, Tequesta, one of the first Tequesta that we have documented named Pedro, um, his baptized name. And uh, so this is, and these were done en plein air, outdoors on the shores of Biscayne Bay. Another thing that's really important to me is I want to connect to place, to the flora, to the fauna, to the sea, to the wind, um, to the rain, but I also want to connect to the cultural and human history of a, of a place. At the Deering Estate, there is an archaeological site called the Cutler Fossil Site. This is the oldest, uh, the, the place that gives us the oldest manifestations of human inhabitation in Southeast Florida, dating back 10,000 years. And so this, luckily, thanks to the fantastic director, Jennifer Tisthammer of the Deering Estate, I'm able to go into this archaeological site it's deep down, it's, it, it, you, you go down into the site and this is a drawing of a cave area in which they found human remains um, from 6,000 years ago. How does this relate to Pam? So in my work, as you'll see after, I'm struggling, who am I? What is my relation to the place that I am in? What is my cultural heritage? And what is my human heritage? And how do I resolve being on both sides of the Atlantic? What is great about Pam is that my struggle with that dynamic is a common one in Miami. 
We, we all, in a sense, live it. We all have multiple identities, multiple roots. And Pam embraces this search and struggle for identity in its work. And for me as an artist, to go to Pam and to see other artists work with similar themes, not only does it give a sense of solidarity, but it inspires me. It gives me new ideas. And I'm always surprised at how another artist has approached a similar subject and found their own voice. And it helps me develop my own. For this talk, I decided to primarily focus on the artist as poet, which is curated by Maritza Lacayo. Um, this is a wonderful exhibition that has smaller works, but they're very intimate and they strike profoundly at um, what I'm interested in, the topics of identity that I'm talking about. The first work that I picked is um, by André Breton, the poet, but it's a book that's published as a portrait by Picasso in it. Um, the, 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 the object that um, Pam has in its permanent collection is a book that has multiple prints of it. And I found an image here of a different copy of the same book. And I picked André Breton because he is in a sense, the founder of surrealism. And surrealism is important to Miami because we have magical surrealism, which comes from Gabriel Garcia Marquez into our own um, imagery in Miami. Um, this, this sense that what we live as normal is surreal to others, but it's also surreal to us that while it is also real, Breton talked about this, that this unknown space, this, this, this space that exists when you're asleep is where the artist's creativity is. And also he's French. And so that was important to me because it gave me a tie into it. A very important artist. The second artist um, that I selected, unfortunately we do not have a photograph of the work that is in the exhibition. It's a sketchbook by Purvis Young. Purvis Young is for me the most important Miami artist and he's also the artist that I feel the most connection with. And that's thanks to the, uh, one of the most important people in the history of art in Miami, and that's Barbara Young, who for uh, quite, a, quite a long time was the director and curator of the exhibitions for the Miami Dade Public Library System. And she befriended Purvis Young and she supported him and, and talked to him and just was his friend. When I was much younger, when I was in high school, I became friends with Barbara, um, thanks to her husband, who was my professor, Bob Huff, who was uh, uh, just so important in, in the development in Miami. And I would visit Barbara in the downtown and the, the main library. And I remember one time I went there and she knew I, I loved to work in sketchbooks. And I went in and Barbara let me sit in the corner of her office and look through a Purvis Young sketchbook. I was holding it. This was in the 1980s. And I was just looking at the sketchbook and the directness and the vivacity and the, the immediacy of the works, the, the realness of the works. I'll never forget that, that, that moment. And it inspires me to this day. And so uh, Purvis Young, although we don't have the work, um, from the Pam collection. You, it is on display right now. You can go see a sketchbook. But to get a, a, an idea of what the work is like just for the sake of this talk, the North Side Metro Rail Station, the Art and Public Places for that station is by Purvis Young. It's a, a wonderful work because he displays the construction of Miami, the building of Metro Rail. And you can see the workers, you see the Miami colors, um, one of the things about art in Miami is that it's almost, it's not even Baroque, it's not even Rococo, it's like the two of them mixed together and then even more. And you can see here, there's a horror vacui, there's no negative space almost. It's just an overwhelming, um, an overwhelming waterfall of information. And you see that manifest itself in quite a few works in Miami, even though colors may be different, um, Imagery might be different, texture might be different. This 
busy composition is something that is quite common in Miami artists. And it makes sense because our lives are like that. Um, so here is another image much closer. I, su I strongly suggest you go to this metro, north side metro rail to see this, this masterpiece by um, Fergus Young. Now, there is a Carlos Alfonso um, uh, work on display at PAM, but it is not uh, that I, I was not able to uh, get an image of that. But to give you an idea, Carlos Alfonso is another very important Miami artist because he does something similar. So if I'm interested in the history of Miami, Purvis Young is painting the history of Miami. But if I'm interested in the cultural identity as it relates to the person, to the individual, then Carlos Alfonso, in a sense, is the master of Miami for this because he does very personal imagery but he does it in a conscious way where he's trying to mix his Cuban, Caribbean, tropical roots with what he says are these bright colors with the structure of the United States, which is the black. And there's this balance between the two. And what's important is that Carlos Alfonso is finding a visual abstract manner of representing a struggle for cultural identity. This is again at a Metro Rail stop. This, I, this picture I took myself, this is the Santa Clara Metro Rail station, and this is the art public places there. So get a pass and you can go to both of them. Um, the last work that I picked from Pam to show you how the works there motivate me, inspire me, they, 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 they strike awe in me, is this Maria Martinez uh, Cañas work, which is called Años Continuos. And what's interesting here is that, um, from what I understand, uh, Maria was exiled from the very, she was born in 1960 and her family immediately went into exile. And in a sense, she's trying to reconstruct the place that she exists in, but it's an abstract place. And so she kind of creates a map, but it's not really of a specific place. And it's not, and there are some images in there. Again, you see similar to the Purvis Young, the Carlos Alfonso, that the space, there's a lot of information here. This is very Miami, even though there are other parts of it that are completely different than the other two artists that I mentioned. So that, that really inspires me. And it's so important that um, Pam, in a sense, serves as a place where these different artists that are working with similar uh, notions of identity assemble themselves. And then other artists like me can go there and see them. Um, so um, one of the re reasons that I picked the um, artist as poet is because, as Marie said, I worked with Richard Blanco on a series in 2007 um, where we collaborated in mixing um, poems and artwork in a way where it wasn't an illustration. So he didn't describe my paintings and I didn't illustrate his poems. Uh, much more of a kind of ambivalent relationship of common themes. Um, and this one here, it gives you an idea. This is a, a map of Cuba with a street map of Paris underneath it. These different places coming together, Richard's uh, Cuban heritage and my uh, my French heritage mixing together into an abstract place. The current paintings that I'm working on are, uh, in, in a sense, they represent the struggles that we have been going through um, as a community, as in, in the world uh, lately. So they're called Flower Wars um, and the Roses of Fibonacci. This is the inside of the Powerhouse Studio, and this is when I was working on three large paintings. And this one here is called Ghost Dance. Now, the Tequesta, and there is a Tequesta burial mound at the Deering State as well, were, when they built mounds, they buried themselves in a circle. And so I painted Ghost Dance because we have blood ancestors, we have cultural ancestors, but we also have geographic ancestors. And no matter where you come from, and no matter what your heritage is, your geographic ancestors, the people that were, who took care of this land before us, 
were the Tequestas. They are our geographic ancestors. And I, despite being French and being born in the UK, when I'm alone hiking at the Deering Estate and I come across this burial mound that I know there are the remains of the Tequesta in there, I feel a strong connection with them on a human level. And I thought with this painting, I could have them re reclaim, come back to life uh, over Miami. So this is ghost ants. The black here are the mangroves. Um, and so what I started with is I made a map of Miami before Europeans came. So this is Miami in 1513. And so I took a Google Maps image and I just removed all of the buildings. And you can see through the middle, there's the Miami River, uh, lower left, Key Biscayne, lower right, Miami Beach. Thank you. Um, when I paint figures, all the figures are, uh, there are studies of them. You can see that here, you can see the circle of the people dancing. Um, this is Venice, Venezuela, which is in the Low Art Museum. And I'm gonna move ahead to not run over too much because I wanted to talk about this painting. Uh, this painting is the 6th of January, 2021. Um, this painting, I don't usually do specific issues because I think they get dated, but this one was too much for me. I had to paint it immediately because an assault on our notions of equality, our notions of, of, of democracy were under threat. And I wanted to, to paint this assault on them. Um, this was shocking to me as somebody that loves this country and thinks that we are striving always to try to do better because we, we, we are not perfect, but we take steps towards it. At least we hope to take steps towards it. And this was to me a step backwards. So I painted this violence and it's really important to me that when I paint violently, something violent, I apply the paint in a violent manner. But I wanted to contrast that with hope. And so as I was working, I had already started the painting, I had the figures going on there and I was painting it uh, very expressively. I had already started it. And then Amanda Gorman read her poem, um, The Hill We Climb. And I thought, my gosh, she's saying what I, what was inside of me, but I didn't have the words for. And so here, in the sky, you can see I painted her poem. It's a little bit difficult, but you can see the letters in there. It took me forever, my arm fell asleep. Here you can see the contrast, the violent figures on the left of your screen, and then her poem in the sky above as, as hope. Uh, I have a few minutes to just tell you what I'm doing right now, which is I have come to paint in France. And this is Lyon. My friend Vincent took this a few weeks ago and we are in the Vieux Lyon. And I've set up a studio here and I'm basically, I'm west of Lyon, which is the third largest city in France, but I'm really in a rural area and I absolutely love it. It's a, it's a complete change. And so what I've done is I've painted these mythological figures in Miami before, if my studies of mangroves. So all those drawings that you saw, saw me doing in there, then end up being the composition in the back. And then I've put the same figures now and doing plein air paintings here in France. The colors are different, the land is different. So here's the figure in the Miami landscape and here's the figure in the French landscape. And I think I'm gonna finish in time if I skip a few of them. And so I draw, that's how I process where I'm at. I'm in a new place, I draw. So this, I went up on the Eiffel Tower and I drew Paris from above. This is Lyon, from, seen from the Croix Rousse. Lyon is a beautiful city. You got to come and see it. And then I go into the countryside as well, and I find these medieval hill towns, and I just bring a picnic and draw them. I'm, I don't have Pam, so I can't go and see the, the, the Purvis Youngs there that motivate me so much. So I'm drawing in the Louvre, and this is a study of the De La Croix, and you can see I really get into this, and they inform me for compositions, I go, this is something that's really interesting. I never draw indoors in Miami. I'm always on the bay or in, in, or in, in, in the natural preserve. And here I go into churches and I draw. And so this is the, these are the last two works that I'll show you. And so 
This I painted in Miami, and you can see the mangroves, and there's Persephone, a figure that is appearing. And what I decided to do is take a Mayan pre-Columbian figure, then appearing into a French church. And so here the light is of a stained glass, and the black is the interior of a church. You can see the diagonals going down towards the middle and the, the altar in the back. Uh, there's Persephone descending into the Cutler fossil site in Miami with mangroves and the, all of the crazy colors of Miami. Uh, tip of the hat to Purvis Young and Carlos Alfonso. And then there's Ichel descending into Saint, the Saint Nizier church in Lyon. And you can see there's the close up of Persephone and there's Ichel with the flowers all around them. So Pam is fantastic. It's, it assembles all of the artists that are dealing with these issues. It celebrates them. It celebrates our struggle with who are we? What is Miami? Is it an idea? Is it a dream? Is it a reality? Is it all of those things in some way? And when I go there, it motivates me and I like to paint. And so I'll take some questions now. So I think Marie is gonna come back on and, uh, and, and handle the questions. Okay, I think I'm back. Um, let's see here. So we have a question from Isabella Marie Garcia and she asks, is there a location or multiple multiple spots in Lyon that you have found yourself going back to for inspiration to draw or paint in situ? Yes, so I got really lucky. I met um, the mayor of Lyon and I was able to meet uh, somebody that works in the city hall and he has given me access to the roof of city hall because I like to get high, I, I need to get high up to draw. And so, and I also go into the San Nizia church. So the city hall, and I have to thank Pierre Jérôme for giving me access and my friend Laurent Vernet that always shows me all of Lyon. And uh, yes, so those places. Awesome. Okay, we have another question from Sofia Guerra and she asks, given the importance of place in relation to your work, you talked a little bit about this, but how does it change when you work in Lyon? How does it stay the same? If there's anything else you'd like to add to that. So um, the, the change is the colors are different. The land is different. The architecture is different and there are no mangroves. So, and I'm not on a kayak. So that is gonna dramatically change the colors that I use and how I apply paint and how I react to things. But also another thing is um, the, the, the biggest difference is that I find myself painting, drawing and painting interiors. I go into these churches, I'm not a religious person, I have no religious beliefs, but I'm interested in, in, in religion as a cultural manifestation uh, of community. And so I go into these churches and I'm very moved by this, this, this profound sense of community and I've been drawing a lot of interiors and my paintings here will be interiors and almost all of my paintings in Miami are exteriors. Excellent. Okay, and then we have another great question from Margaret Rose Allen Anciola. Um, very interesting, your sense that Europe is expansive while Miami is claustrophobic. Uh, for me, it's the opposite, she says, as Europe seems very compressed, like it was made for model train sets, which is kind of hilarious. Uh, Whereas on this side of the of the puddle or charco, the landscapes are so expansive with the botanical aspects, everything's growing and growing, the skies are green and ever expanding. So more of a comment, but like, what do you think about that? The comparison of like the different types of landscapes and the feelings those, that those bring. So, so I'm specifically comparing Miami to Europe and I hike, a lot and I kayak a lot in Miami and that landscape consumes you, you know, like it's, it's all over you. You walk through it and I mean, it, it's just the tropical landscape envelops you. And when you hike in the Everglades, you're hiking in water. 
And when I hike here, I'm in mountain areas and the trees are further away. There's not vines going all over you. And so that's, that's what I mean. Um, architecturally, certainly, um, there's, uh, I, architecturally, it's much more claustrophobic here um, in, in Europe and it's more expansive in Miami um, and in the US. But from a, from a physical experience of the nature, Miami is way more, in my, in my perspective, claustrophobic. Mm. Okay. Um, and then we have another question from Dani Mar Tapia. Uh, can you talk a bit about what motivated you to paint your piece, Venice, Venezuela? Yes, so um, I read that Amerigo Vespucci, which has a guy from Florence, has two continents aimed, named after him, which is almost absurd, right? That, I, how absurd that is, is just, it blows my mind, right? And also the guy that named it after him uh, feminized his name, the way that Europe became Europa. He's like, oh, continents have to be feminine names. So Amerigo became America. And I thought that's so absurd. And then we call ourselves Americans, but we're just really saying we are named after this guy from Florence. Amerigo Vespucci was going along the coast of what is now called Venezuela. And he saw houses on stilts and said to his friend, oh my gosh, it reminds me of a little Venice. It's like a Venezuela. And I thought, I imagine a person that has, that lived on that land and had lived on that land for centuries, their ancestors. And then you all of a sudden tell them, yeah, you live in a place called Venezuela. And that they're, for them, their world would explode. Like, what, what are you talking about? Yeah, it's named after Venice. And he's like, the person would be like, what is that? And if we were seeing that painting, you see that there's a figure that has an explosion around them. And basically it is their world exploding and there's Venice landing almost like a spaceship onto them and their mind is exploding. Wow, beautiful, thank you. Um, and I think one last question. So you're an educator and you have this, I think a beautiful blend of being an educator and also maintaining a very prolific and rigorous artistic practice. And I wanted to know, how does your work as an educator inform and impact your artistic practice? Well, um, I'm very fortunate because in the Honors College, um, our dean, uh, JC Espinosa, is incredibly supportive of experimental pedagogical experiences. And so I have been able to create classes that are, in a sense, deep dives into different places. France, Italy, Spain, but also I teach a class called Miami and Miami. And so we, for example, we do a day in the class, it's called Miami Metro Day. We did it before COVID, we're waiting to do it again soon. We just get a day pass on Miami Metro, Metro Rail, and we just stop at different places. And that kind of experience not only feeds my work, but doing it with the students that I love to hear their perspective influences my perspective. And then when I hear that, it, it feeds my work because my students have all different kinds of backgrounds and I'm doing what I want to do to learn about the place, the, the places that influence my work, but I get to do it with like 20 awesome people from different backgrounds and I hear all those different perspectives and then I just steal from them. <laughs> So no, there's, there's a symbiotic relationship between my students and I. Um, they don't realize how much they give me. And fortunately, like I said, I have, a, a, the Honors College encourages this kind of pedagogy. That's awesome. Well, they do say when you teach, you know, two people are learning, the teacher and the student, so. Oh, absolutely, that's yeah. definitely true. That's awesome. Well, John, Thank you so much. This was such a pleasure to hear more about your practice, to learn about what you're doing. Thank you for joining us all the way from France. I know the yeah. time change is a little bit different, so we really- It's fine, this. I love it. <laughs>
But thank you to everyone watching, tuning in today. Thank you for your questions and um, come by the PAM and look out for John Williams, William Bailey's work. Au revoir.